example 415 in the 14th edition. We have this interesting looking structure, we've got these pipes here, and we've got uh, a bunch of forces and couples acting on this structure. Okay? We have a 750 Newton force acting down at this distance from that point. We have 500 acting there. Let me just bring the textbook a bit closer. All right. So these are just single forces. And what do you notice about this? We have a couple. We've got 200 there in that direction and 200 there. Okay, so we are in section 4.7 which is the simplification of a force and couple system. Okay, so in the previous videos, I, I tried my best to give kind of the essence of the idea of what, we, what we're trying to do is that we're trying to simplify a system that has forces and couples, and we're trying to simplify it to a single force and couple system at a specified point on the body. Okay? Um, so what's happened now is they've chosen point O. They say, replace the force and couple system acting on the members by an equivalent resultant force and couple moment acting at point O. An equivalent resultant force and couple moment acting at point O. So if we just have a look at this, what's actually happening here is that we have a force here, the 750, that wants to push the structure down Okay, we have a force here, 500, that wants to pull the structure up in that direction. And we have a couple here that wants to cause pure rotation, right? Pure, sorry, it should be this way. I wasn't looking at the arrows. Pure rotation of the structure. So, if we look at any point not along the line of action of these forces, then those forces at that point will cause both a translation in their, in their directions, meaning at that point, that 750 also wants to push the beam down, and at that point, this 500 also wants to pull it in that direction, but because that point is not on the line of action of those forces, those forces are also causing a moment about point O, right? So the, the, the essence is what do these forces and couples, what is their effect at any point along the beam? So if we choose a point there, then what we'll, what we'll see is we'll have a 750 Newton acting there, plus a couple moment due to that 750 Newton, and we will have a 500 Newton force also acting there in that direction, plus a couple moment due to that force. And then we'll also have, at that point, we will have a couple moment due to this. Because this is a free vector, we can place this free vector at any point on the beam. So I hope, that's, I hope you're picking up the idea now um, that we're trying to obtain an equivalent system by determining the effect that each of these, a couple or forces, is having at a specified point on the beam. Okay? So, for example, if we look at this point there, right there, then at that point you will have the effect of the 750, but you will have no rotational effect due to that force because it's along the line of action of that force, right? Okay, so, so essentially what we need to do is we, when we are trying to... Um, I'm just waiting for this to focus. When we're trying to find out the equivalent system, right? Equivalent. We're trying to simplify the force, the forces, forces and couples that are acting on a system. We're trying to simplify this into a single force plus couple moment at a point, at a at a specific point, okay? We're trying to find an equivalent system, okay? So the equations that we need to um, understand are this. We need to determine our resultant force, which is just the sum of all the forces, 
and we need to determine our resultant, uh, sorry, our resultant couple moment. How did they write it? It's MR0. That's our resultant couple moment, which is equal to the sum of all the moments due to the forces plus all the existing couple moments. Okay? So, so this, this is really what we, what we need to understand. We need to find the resultant force, which is the sum of all the forces. We take that resultant force and we place it at the point that we're interested in. But then we need to calculate all the moments due to those forces and include them about that point. And we need to include all the existing couple moments. Okay? So this is essentially what is happening. Okay? We first do a force summation. So we get all the forces in the x direction, all the forces, the resultant force in the x direction is the sum of the forces in the x direction. The resultant force in the y direction is the sum of the forces in the y direction. Okay? So all the forces in the y direction, you're going to have this component, minus 750, and you're going to have the vertical component of this, which is 500 times 4 over 5. That's the vertical component. So 500, 4 over 5, minus 750, gives me minus 350 Newton, or 350 Newton down. That's the vertical component. The horizontal component will be 500 times 3 over 5, and it will be in the positive x direction. Okay? That's what we get there, 500, 3 over 5. Now, what about these two? Well, again, like I told you, a couple has no translational effect. It has no translational effect. It has only a pure rotational effect on the body because the forces cancel out. So that's why we do not add them in there because it's plus 200 minus 200. So now we get a, FR, a resultant force in the X, a resultant force in the Y. We get our resultant force using um, Pythagoras. And we get 461 Newton plus 461 Newton, FR, okay? acting at an angle of 49,4. So, so I, I said plus, but really what I'm, what I'm trying to say is it's 461 acting at this angle. Just wait for my camera to zoom, I mean to focus. It's not focusing. Okay, hopefully that's a bit better. So this 49,4 is this angle from the horizontal. Okay, and there is that resultant force. Sorry, this is not focusing very nicely. Okay, so we've got this resultant force of 461, and we've got this angle here as well of 49,4. So, so if I add up all these forces, I end up with this resultant force here. Okay, but now. Because I've moved the forces, so to speak, to a point, not along their lines of action, I need to also include the moments that these forces are causing about that point. Okay? So I hope that is clear. So I need to determine what is the moment of this force about point O. Well, it's going to be 750 times 1,25, and it's clockwise. So that's what we get. we get here. Right? So there's that equation. The resultant moment about O is equal to the sum of the sum of the moments due to the forces about point O plus the sum of the existing couple moments. Okay? So what you notice here is I've got one, two, three, four moments. These two moments here are due to the principle of moments, which means I break up this 500 into its X and Y. I determine the moments due to those two components, which I which I get there and there. Then I also add up, I sum the moment due to this force, which is a clockwise moment. By the way, this 500 is broken up into its X and Y components. This X component, is it going to give me a clockwise or an anti-clockwise moment? This one going in this direction, like that. Okay going to give me a clockwise moment. So 500, three, 500 times 3 over 5 times 1. 
but it's going to be a minus 500 times 3 over 5 times 1, but it's a minus because it's going clockwise. And then the vertical one, 500 times 4 over 5 times 2.5, but it's going anti-clockwise, so it's positive. 500 times 4 over 5 times 2.5, is that what I said? 2.5. Okay, so there are the three forces, uh, sorry, the three moments which are due to the forces. Then we need to include our couple moment as well. There's our couple moment. And we end up with this minus 37,5, which means it's 37,5 clockwise. Okay, and so we take that and we just simply apply it there. So this entire system of forces and couples is then replaced by an equivalent system of a resultant force at a certain angle plus a resultant couple moment acting there. These two systems are equivalent. They have the same external effects. These, all these forces and couples acting on, this, on the system has exactly the same external effect as the single force there plus the couple. Okay? Hope that helps. Cheers.